What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Sequence. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe, and today we have a very special guest, five-time All-Star, four-time Silver Slugger, Gold Glove winner, 2013 NL MVP, Andrew McCutcheon. What's up, man? What's up, bro? Thanks for having me, man. I, I love having you on here. We go way back. 2007, we played together in the Arizona Fall League. And, uh, man, it's been fun to follow your career since then. Um, I asked you to yes, come sir. on, and you were gracious enough to, to bless us with your presence. And we had a couple of bats we were going to go through, and this one in particular you said, I had an aha moment against Zach Greinke in 2014. Can you go ahead and tell us what that aha moment means to you? Yeah, so anybody in – baseball world they kind of they kind of they know what that means like you've been there um you know we've all been there when we're just hitting one day or you know we, and then we say something like oh something just clicked and for me um at that moment um i was i was i, I was i was pretty good numbers i mean i was hitting right around 300 um and but my my power for myself like i you know i had a standard for myself i just felt like my power really wasn't there I was getting my hits, but I wasn't hitting for power like I felt like I should be. And uh, if anybody can remember, like 2012, 13, and a little bit of even 14, I was, I was, I used to hit with the bat rested on my shoulders. Um, so when I got to this point, this was the first day I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna hit with the bat rested anymore. I'm gonna take the bat off my shoulders, and I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of rhythm, and maybe that was gonna help me get in the position to be able to just get my foot down and be able to fire. So I, I worked on it in the cage and right when, from the, like literally the first swing, I, I, I just went, that's it. Like I, I looked at my coach, I went, I was like, that's it. And he looked at me, he's like, huh? I'm like, that's it. I'm that, that's exactly what I've been trying to like feel. That's what, that's what I've been trying to feel. And, and, um, fast forward I, at, at this point, my first at bat had already hit a double. Mm -hmm. off the wall um and then this at bat right here was the the next the next at bat and it was the first pitch of this at bat and that's when i like after i i got this hit uh, or this homer i was like yeah this is this is this is it i'm right where i want to be did you just decide to do that on a whim or what what was the influence for that did you see somebody else with their bat off the shoulder or just decided one day like i need to do something a little different you know what? It was it was my decision, um, just for the fact of uh, you know I was I liked it, but also know where I I know I can be at that point. I knew I could be a little better than what I was. Um, of course, my hitting coaches or whoever they they thought I was crazy because I was hitting three hundred. I was you know I had coming had off an numbers. MVP, <laughs> coming off an MVP season. <laughs> like they're like, dude, don't change a thing. You know, like you're fine. And I was like trying to tell them. But I knew it, there was no convincing them because they weren't feeling what I was feeling. I'm like, yeah, I can get my hits. Like, of course I can get my hits, but I know I can be better than what I, where I'm at. I, I want to be able to repeat as much as I can. And I, I was just, I was, I wasn't struggling to repeat. I was just struggling to get myself in a position that when I got the pitch that I wanted to hit, I was crushing it. I wasn't just getting a hit. I was actually like backspinning it. So okay. that was that's that was from my, my decision after we were just flying over from New York playing the Mets. I think I faced DeGrom. Um, I don't know who else I faced um, there. Um, Bartolo Colon, when he was there, he was he was nasty in 14 for them. Mm -hmm. And I got a couple hits against him. And it's one of those things where like I could I had to keep it to myself because I was getting hits and I was and I was getting like mad, like mad, <laughs> upset at myself. And. So it was. I couldn't tell anybody that because you know, you, you know, you got to be cognizant of your surroundings. And I, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm I'm getting hits and I'm over here getting mad at myself, and some dude over there sitting next to me is hitting, you know, a buck eighty, and I'm saying like, "Dang, man!" Like, you know, get you know, he's gonna look at me like <laughs> <laughs> he's like I'm crazy. So, so I was just like keeping it to myself, and I I, I left out. I, I got a couple hits against Cologne, or you know, rollovers. Now nowadays, it being out because they play in the six hole. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, that's 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 when I made up in my mind. Like, you know, I, I need to I need to switch this up. I need to figure this out. I, I've always loved your setup. 
And, you know, there are times where I'll try to help younger hitters out or like I even gave lessons for a little bit a while back. And the thing I'd always tell these guys is number one thing is you got to be on time. And my lingo to them would be smoothly on time. Mm -hmm. I don't want you rushing anywhere. And when I think about you and your swing, I think about that really slow, gradual kind of load or I don't know what you call it. But is that something you've always done, or like where where's the influence for Andrew McCutcheon's swing? Yeah, so um, not to like dissect or go too much into it, thirty minutes just talking about that. But when I was twelve, I went I remember a perfect game or something like that. I think that's what the camp was. Um, yeah, you're 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 a, you're a Cali boy, so you're more like area codes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So. <laughs> But um, I remember a perfect game. Yeah. yeah, at 12 years old, I got to go to a camp in San Juan, Puerto Rico. It was a Broca Mene camp. Got to go to – it was his hometown, 200 kids there. And I used to hit with my elbow really cocked high. And my there was a guy by the word who was there, a few people in the game um, now. But um, he was like, line your knuckles up. And I was like, what do you mean by that? And – he uh, kind of explained, showed me how to line my knuckles up on the bat. He's like, you just want to be as relaxed as possible, like when you hit. You want you want to feel like you know the bat's almost gonna slip out of your hand. So it felt weird at first, but and kept doing it and kept doing it, and then eventually that's kind of how I like. I don't know if anyone really pays attention to my hands, but you know my top hand, you know my 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 fingers are like barely on the bat i don't like i'm not really like touching the bat that hard so um but that's where that came from was from that that tournament and just okay. kind of just gradually gradually like, becoming more and more comfortable with it and that's how that's that's how i began and how i kind of started my journey of like my stance and set up I, I love that it was like at a roberto clemente camp and then you end up getting drafted by the pirates doing your thing as a pirate, yeah. you know, that's, that's coming full circle yeah. right there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I, I have a little experience with that knuckle, um, lining up. I was always a top hand heavy guy and I tried to do that as well. And it was really tough for me, but I do know that watching good hitters, most of the time they are like that. And it's, it really helps you stay in that path or get to the path and stay in it longer. Is that yeah, something that you sure. felt? Yeah, I felt I felt in a sense that it. I was trying to take my top hand in the beginning of everything. I was trying to take that out of the equation. Um, uh, so what I mean by that, like when when I was in my setup and I'm rocking and the pitchers before I even pitches, I'm in my little rhythm. I almost not. I don't even want to think about my top hand so much. Like I really want to think about um, really guiding that bottom hand to the ball. And when that ball is coming, like I'm really focusing on just bottom hand to the ball. Like, you know, I, I feel like because your, your bottom hand is supposed to be essentially it's the shorter path to the ball is quicker there than your top hand would be. So I kind of just take my top hand out of the equation. And I think with that, you know, just having my hand, my hand be really, really relaxed. I think that helps me just get in that in, in that position of where I'm. I'm as relaxed as I can, and I'm able to repeat that a whole lot. I love it. All right, well, this is kind of a dig me at bat, especially because it's against a guy like Zach Grinky. I mean, this is one of the best pitchers in the game, and he's been that for a long time. So, yeah, I mean, he he was having he was having a heck of a year. I mean, that that year, 2014. I mean, he was he was really balling. So that's definitely. I mean, that even helped, like you know, solidify what I was what I was feeling. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you said you had the epiphany right before this game. First at bat, double off him. Um, that's always good to get an instant result. And then you come up yeah. here, top of the third, and we'll just get into the bat. It's a short at bat, but moments like this, this is why I love doing this show because sometimes you just have a moment like this where it's like, okay, like I get it. And you did it Yeah. at Dodger Stadium against Zach Grinky. Yeah. So we see sure. now, yeah, like if is... you see the picture now, the bat – is on your shoulder, but you're going to get it off of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's start it up. All right. 
I see it right there. Now you're off that's, of it. Yeah. Now that's you're off of it. Setup. And does that feel like a crazy adjustment right there? Like, do it, you remember that? Yeah, I remember it because I was trying to figure out how can I repeat my rhythm? Like, how can I keep a rhythm where I'm not rocking too fast and I'm not rocking, rocking too slow? I don't feel like I'm, I'm somewhere where I shouldn't be. So what I would do um, is for prior to me, I would, I would rest the bat like I'm used to resting it. Mm -hmm. And then, and then when I felt ready, I would just bring the bat off and then start my, start my rhythm. So um, that would, that would kind that kind of helped me not feel like I was just out of sync or out of whack with it being the first time in a long time that I've done it. So I just can't. And even maybe sometimes the pitchers will hold a long time. I would rock, 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 and then I would stop. I would rest it, and I keep going again, just to not feel like I'm, you know, I'm in no man's land when I'm when I'm up there. Yeah, like you, if if you have a spot that like you're resting on your shoulder, that you know where your barrel's at. And now when you take it off, exactly, like you're saying, you got to be able to repeat it. You got to know where your barrel is. So that's, I mean, it's impressive that yeah. this happened and you took it right to the game. So all right, here we go, yeah. man. Bat off the shoulder, first pitch. You know we're gonna go back and watch it again. First yeah. pitch, I mean he set up away. I love how you're loaded and I think you're just you just have like a simple setup and it really allows you mm-hmm. to be consistent with it. Yeah. But now yeah. this is this is where you said the power comes in. Yeah. See, because before before this is I was getting that pitch before I got was in the setup. I was getting that pitch, and I was either rolling it over, or I was I was hitting it up the middle for a line drive or something like that. But I was not putting power behind, it, especially to the opposite field. Yeah. So for for me, when I was able to get this pitch, it be first pitch, it be middle way, and me to be able to deposit it in right center the way that I did. I knew at that moment, like, this is exactly what I'm searching for. This is like, this is that feeling that I'm looking for. I felt like I had all the time in the world to see the ball out of Grinky's hand, to recognize it, to get my foot down, and then to be able to put force behind it and do it effortlessly. So I was like, man, this is, this is, I, I have all the time in the world right now. I feel like I have so much time. Like, I can just wait till he throws the ball and then I can <laughs> make my mind up. Like that, that in my mind, that's what I felt like when I was at, yeah. at that moment. That's what I felt like. That's a great feeling. And do you think it's because you kind of eliminated that step of having to take your bat off your shoulder? You already yes, it, started there. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Because that's 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 what I felt like, and I was like, because there were times where I felt a little rushed when I would rest the bat because there was that one piece that I had to add in to get mm-hmm. everything started. So I was like, let me just get that out of the way. So to load get my foot down get through the ball and i was like so now I, i'm eliminate one thing so that's giving me a little extra time to be able to, to let the ball travel a little further i love it let's watch it one more time just dig it a little bit more because this is a bomb and you right center in 2014 an opposite field home run meant a lot it did nowadays <laughs> you know like it might have changed a little bit but that this it is might have it might have yeah, it might have. I just remember hitting it, and I remember Adrian Gonzalez looking <laughs> at me and giving me that look like, how does this little dude hit a ball like that? <laughs> you said, I got the hardware, baby. <laughs> All right, here, let's take one more look at it. Yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah, Nothing sweeter I still, than that. No, I still feel that one. And that's the catch I remember right there. Oof. Everybody like bring them dress back, man. <laughs> I, I I just you know the yeah pirates dreads, nothing better than that. So yes, sir. I appreciate yes, sir. you coming on, sharing the insight with us. We'll be back with the bat number two. Thank you uh, again for coming on, man. Yes, sir.